Rishi Sunak has said a host of new measures that came into force yesterday will put more money in pockets and help ignite the economy. He claimed policies such as free childcare extension and a rise in the, well, a rise in the living wage could save households around, get this, £3,850 a year. More changes are coming next week, including a rise in benefits and pensions. However, with a host of bills on the rise, do you believe the government can help Britain bounce back? Before we debate this, here's how things are looking as we enter April. Let's just have a, a look at this. We've got childcare. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a sell over here. <laughs> Two years ago, Shopping what's, channel. <laughs> what's on the board, Miss Ford? Yes. I mean, it is like a political version of that shopping channel, QVC, others are available. Mm -hmm. uh, childcare, 15 free hours for patients uh, of two-year-olds. Uh, that's parents, not patients, by the way. Um, that's, of course, if nursery, nursery places are uh, available, which we know is a problem. Living wage, up to £11.44 an hour. That's up from £10.42. pence. Housing benefits, 1.6 million households will be £800 a year better off. Now, this is a big and important one. National insurance cut, average work gains £450 after Saturday's cut. Now, this is not necessarily um, a government thing, but they have control and management over regulation, and it does impact uh, on the economy. Um, the energy price cap, down from £238 to £1,690. Um, I should add a, a little fly in the ointment there. We should be, of course, mindful, to say the very least, of the profits that the energy companies have made. We'll be talking about that in due course. So yeah. going to you, uh, looking at that, Henry, uh, are you sold? Do you look at this and think that the Tories are, are, are the answer? No, no, I'm just looking at uh, what you see below the black line there, but all these could be rising for you. We know that water bills, council tax, TV licence, phone and broadband costs, and obviously you've got the vehicle tax, NHS dental charges, and you've also got the pensioners being dragged into paying tax because of the freeze on the zero band. So it's £12,570 you can take in before you start paying any tax, and that's been frozen for three years. Can you just, like, unpick that a little? Yeah. It's very clever what you're saying. Um, you know, uh, and, uh, the reason I say it's clever, I read this story and I was shocked that of all of the people the Tories are hoping are going to stay with them, yes. it's pensioners. Absolutely. And just, just help unpick that a little bit. Help me understand that a little bit more. More pensioners are being dragged into paying tax. That's right, because... Um, a significant percentage of pensioners do not take in from all sources more than £12,570. You know, unless you make more than £12,570, you don't pay any tax. Right. But because of this thing called fiscal drag, they're being dragged into paying tax because the government has frozen those thresholds. If it had allowed them to increase in line with inflation, um, the threshold might be thirteen or 14000 or even more. But because they've frozen for the last um, three years, those people are now paying tax. So, real terms, pensioners yeah. are going to be paying tax, get a great big bill in yeah. circumstances where before they've been completely outside That's of right. paying income tax. And these are people who vote. Right. And the so government often they're... assumes votes right. conservative. Angela, does that uh, the buffet of uh, promises look like the cure to all of the Tories' woes to you? I, I think... It's a fantastic menu, actually. I think that um, given that we have been through a cost of living crisis, Ukraine, all the global instability, the mission creep of China, all the different volatile variables that impact the way an economy can function. Um, and given also, look at what the alternative is. Um, you know, I know Mrs Thatcher always said, vote for us because we're good, not because the others are bad. Yeah. But Labour, we don't know what they stand for. Repeated U-turns could be, you know, getting rid of, of uh, zero contracts and um, giving more power to the unions, all of which will strangle business. And business is the engine, engine room of the economy. I think, what do you want? <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a whole list of things here that can only help inspire consumer confidence, business confidence, which will lead to growth. Um, mm. And I know other things go up, but there are lots of other, as I said, variables and pressures which, which drive economic but change. events, dear Angela, <clears throat> events, as Macmillan once said, events, but dear boy, events. These guys have been in power in some uh, form or iteration since 
2010, when, when David Cameron, the former Prime Minister, now Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, declared an age of austerity. Well, how long did he think it was going to last? Well, he it's didn't know about COVID years. coming up. It doesn't matter. It's events. You, you are elected to look after us. You are the government. You set the framework. The other thing is, you know, the, the, you know, uh, the population, our yeah. communities are not stupid, right? Yeah. They realise these are promises made in election year. You know, and it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist or a Henry Bonsu to <laughs> unpick whether something, you know, frankly, is as honest or as reliable, yeah. um, you know, as a chocolate fire guard. They can smell <laughs> the public a lie like a yeah. fart in a car, right? And one of the things that I think is disturbing here is the top promise, 15 hours for parents... Yes. Uh, of two-year-olds, or as I called them, patients accidentally. Um, <laughs> Ofsted data suggests more than a thousand childcare places were lost between March and December 2023, um, with Mr Thomas Simmons labelling the policy a, a betrayal. If there are not the places, how do you deliver that policy in the first place? That's right, because what the government does, it's got this contract, it says <coughs> available, so it declares a policy, but if the infrastructure isn't there to deliver it, then it may as well not exist. It's like with levelling up, you know, the government says, you know, in 2020, Boris Johnson, we're going to level up the country. Ten billion pounds worth of levelling up funding, only one billion has been used. Well, let's just go, I want to go to Sandra in a city where everybody speaks common sense, Coventry. Um, what do you think? Have you looked at this, woke up this morning and thought, I wasn't sure about voting Conservative, but given the promises, I'm in now. Uh, good morning, uh, Rob. Um, well, no, I'm very disillusioned. I think politicians never ask, answer questions. They seem to, you know, answer with an arm, you know, with a, another sort of question. We never get any definite answers. And as I say, I yes, I mean, I, I thought we would give Rishi um, a chance and see what's happening, but I think with Keir Starmer, nice man, but he changes his mind all too often. And I really think Britain has finished in some respects. I think we're on a very slippery downward slope. And I, I am quite disillusioned. I mean, I'm, I'm a pensioner. I'm yep. horri horrified to find my television licence fee had gone up, like many thousands of others. We are on limited incomes. Everything has gone up. Um, our council tax has just risen by £10 at right. a time. It's just, you know, we're not living, Rob, anymore. We are just existing. Sandra, I think I... you you represent a, a general feeling that I hear uh, uh, across the country, that the, the country feels like it's in a moment of depression uh, and decline. Now, can I ask you, Sandra, do, do you think that... Uh, I'm interested to hear what you say about uh, Keir Starmer. Are you motivated to go and vote Labour on the back of the promises that the Tories have made? Or are you, like a lot of people now are threatening to do just at the next general election, going to shrug your shoulders and not vote? Well, that's right. I think shoe leather is important, Rob. It's expensive. <laughs> and I don't, don't want to waste it to vote on a party that I'm not convinced about. Um, there seems to be a lot of, I don't know, they stir the dirty water between both parties. Well, I mean, we had the Angela Rain a bit last week and right. then we get something this week. Um, they're, they're just like well, children in a in a playground and I find it rather disillusioned, well it's yeah. very disillusioning and as I say we are supposed to recognise these people as educated people who are for us and to help us and I, I think a lot of people are feeling that we're being very badly let down. Well I wasn't wrong when I said people in Coventry uh, speak uh, common sense uh, to, to say the very least, I think you, you represent, uh, thank you, Sandra, a lot of what uh, people uh, in the country are, are feeling. They've it's lost I understand that. that. You, you, I understand yeah. that. But I also, I also take issue with this kind of this nihilism. It's going to be awful, so we're just not going to do anything about it. When you are a government, you have to set up policy. And obviously, it has to be fully costed and work out how you'll fund it, which is what Labour failed to do. And that's why they rescinded their £28 billion yeah. green tax thing. But just one thing I would say very quickly about Sandra, you must, must vote. People died for the vote. They died for equality for the vote. You have to express right. your democratic right. Even to if vote. you spoil your vote, I'm, I'm with you uh, on that. But the question that Sandra raises is: there really any meaningful difference between the political parties and these people that are saying it's going to be a Labour wipeout? It's worth listening to. to it's going to be a, a, a Labour landslide. Yeah. It seems to me, and a Tory wipeout. It's worth listening to Sandra, it seems to me. Now, after the... Firstly, I'm going to go to you uh, in a lovely part of our nation, Newport. Brian, what do you think? You've seen what they're offering and promising. Is it all hogwash? I think we should let them carry on because Labour have got nothing. 
Mm. They haven't jumped out and said, look, wow, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to defeat you. This is what we promise. There's nothing. And then if you look around the country, the problems with the, with the towns and things are all Labour uh, councils. The problems with so, the... I didn't, I didn't catch what you said. The problem with the towns. Thames. The Thames. Right, OK. Towns, the towns are like Labour council-run towns. Right, I think you said towns. You know, Brian, um, I think... I, I, I want to unpick that for a, a second. Are you saying that the reason you're not motivated to vote Labour is that you might, but you don't see them as offering an alternative vision for Britain? Yeah, they, they've got nothing. Have you voted Labour in the past, Brian? You don't have to tell me. It is secret between you and the ballot box. Um, I did, yes, because my father-in-law used to say Tories, they are only for money, they're money people. But no, you know, Labour have got nothing now. Well, it's nice to hear from you, Brian. I'm going to hand over I to you. you know, yeah. Henry, do, do, do you agree with that? Do you think? No, I don't. I mean, it'd be interesting to know from Brian or any of our other uh, callers what alternative vision they want, what difference between the parties they want. One of the reasons why they're bunching together is because that's where they think the British people are, not at the extremes of the right or extremes of the left. They say elections are won in the centre ground, you know. Now, there is a difference of emphasis, of course, if not deep ideology between the current Conservatives and the Labour Party. Um, look at someone like Angela Rayner, very different from Rishi Sunak, you know. Uh, but, I mean, you heard Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner last week talking about properly implementing levelling up because the current government has put 10 or 11 billion pounds into it and they haven't spent it because they don't really know how they want to spend it. And talking about Sandra, our earlier caller, who said there was a real malaise about Britain at the moment, we, the cost to our mental health of the current government, the people not going back to work because they don't feel able to, that's a different kind well, of cost. So there's a, there's of a number of problems. It's very interesting. Come back to you, Angela. Uh, what Brian raises um, is the same thing that a number of our callers are, are asking is, what is the alternative... You brought up Margaret Thatcher a couple of times during the course of our discussion. Yeah. You know, what is the alternative political vision, a different philosophy? You know, is it nationalisation? Is there going to be an well, actual sea change in the way this nation is governed? And is that going to motivate people to vote for Labour? Christine, you're in Staffordshire. What do you think? You've heard what Rishi is promising, putting more money in people's pockets. Do you believe him? No, I don't believe it. I'm a pensioner. I have had my triple lock increase. That has been completely wiped out. I am obviously in the, the tax situation now because I have been given an increase, but I am now paying double for my water. I was just given the bill the other day. You can't even get through to the water company because they're having so many calls. Christine, can, can we have a moment with you? Are can, doubled. Christine, I've got to sort of have a moment with you. This. How do you feel uh, when you're told that the water company you can't get uh, in touch with, there's 11, I think, water companies in this country, 2022, 20, 2023 20, or thereabouts, just shy of 400,000 toxic leaks into our shared waterway, and uh, the heads of those companies give themselves massive bonuses in some instances. What does it do to you when you hear those numbers? I'm very upset about it, very annoyed. My husband used to work in the utilities business, so he fully understands what has been going on with the utility companies for years. And all the money that should have been spent on infrastructure in this country has just been given to the shareholders yeah. and to the bosses in huge payouts and bonuses. And it's completely wrong. And they're now expecting us, as taxpayers, to pay and contribute to fixing the water industry, which should have been fixed yep. years ago. Well, they 27 had the money to do it. To, sorry to cut over you, £27, pounds, uh, uh, it looks like, uh, 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 a month, uh, yep. the water bills are going to go up for average people, uh, well, for all of us, actually. But, you know, I listen to sort of Christine and hear the sort of impact that uh, this has uh, on her life. You know, a, a good person doing her very best, yep. trying to uh, live a life in a way that contributes to our shared community, and that's the impact. But we've yeah. got to look at the reality. I mean, Christine, I, I've obviously, 
I have profound sympathy with you for everybody, everybody that is struggling because of all these different pressures on their on their pocket. And, and that is what's going to win or lose the election with whether people will feel they're going to be better off or not. The, the, the sad, brutal truth is there's a certain amount of money. We've had, as I said at the, the beginning of this discussion, there are external pressures which, which interfere with the economy, even if we don't want them to. And I, I think, Christian, am I right in saying this a loss of faith or a loss of trust? Because if Labour came along and said, well, we're going to do this, this and this, which we don't know. I mean, they talked about renationalising the railways and now they looks like they're going to ditch that. They seem to U-turn on every economic policy that they draft up. Do you have do you have faith in anybody uh, rectifying the financial landscape? I mean, it's just it's just a Tory issue for you. If I can come in, yes, I do have a bit more faith in the Labour Party because they are not concerned with lining the pockets of the wealthy and that the wealthiest people have got more wealthy over the last 14 years with this Tory government and the poor have got poorer and the Tories are not interested in levelling up which you've just discussed yep. and helping people across the country. They are not interested. It's London centric and all their wealthy friends. It is nothing to do with supporting working people to have a decent life. We're not asking for a fortune. We're asking for a decent life, being able to pay our bills but not subsidising well, the most wealthy in society. But Christine, uh, we hear what you say, the number of people uh, who agree with you. Some will be pointing to the rise uh, in the minimum wage. Some will be saying that uh, the Labour Party are not doing um, a a anything different. We hear what you say and are grateful for your call this morning. Thank everybody uh, for your calls on this. After the break, this is one which surprised me. Now, should we be more lenient with elderly shoplifters as numbers rise? The number is 027 862 2222. That's the number you need. We'll see you after the break.